Thursday, New York City Mayor Eric Adams spoke at City Hall about gun violence, and he was deeply affected by one of the latest victims. Here's a look at what the mayor had to say on CBS News New York. Just a few days ago, a young man named Jaquan McKinley was murdered in Bed-Stuy, shot and killed while sitting in his car. He was 18 years old. 18. I didn't know Jaquan, but his death hit me hard because the more I found out about Jaquan's story, the more I saw how many times he had been failed by a system that is supposed to help boys like him. I spoke with Jaquan's parents about his life, about how that system failed him. Jaquan and his family compelled me to look into the profile of other known alleged trigger pullers, and I was deeply disturbed by what I found. The same warning signs over and over again, the same abandonment, the same betrayal, and I saw the pattern. A clear profile emerged of someone who needed help and never got enough. So many of our young men in crises fit this profile. Children who have experienced homelessness, have a learning disability, dropped out of school. It's not the profile of a killer, but the shadow of a system that isn't working the way it should. All along the way, Jaquan's life was touched by social workers, city workers, and housing systems, the justice systems, and more. There were individuals who deeply wanted him to succeed who have dedicated their lives to those who need help. This is not a speech about those individuals. It's about the system that failed him, about a society that failed him. We are failing too many of our sons and daughters, especially those in the neighborhoods we've overlooked and written off. We have betrayed an entire generation of black and brown and children of color who are at risk. Boys and girls who get on the wrong path and need help finding their way out before they become victims. Boys and girls whose parents desperately try to get them help but are overwhelmed by the complexities of the system. Boys and girls who are clearly in need of intervention but never get what they need to succeed. Boys and girls whose lives begin with hope but end in violence. Jaquan was one of those boys. We have talked a lot about crime in our city, but today I want to talk about how our young people have become criminals in certain areas. How they end up as victims of gun violence, about a system that continually fails them, even when so many try to help. About a society that invests in everything except our young people. This isn't a speech about a policy or a single young life. It's a case study of how a young man became a potential trigger puller. It's the anatomy of a failure, not of Jaquan's failure, but ours as a society. Let's start at the beginning. Jaquan grew up in the South Bronx, a vibrant community that showcases so many things we love about New York City, diversity, community, culture, energy. But it's also a place where 50% of the children live below the poverty line. A neighborhood with one of the highest unemployment rates in the city and one of the lowest graduation rates. A neighborhood where many families struggle. Jaquan belonged to one of those families. By the time he was five, he and his family had entered a homeless shelter. Now, right there, our city should have done more. Over the next four years, Jaquan's family lived in seven different shelters without stability or security. Jaquan started kindergarten at PS 723 in the Bronx, a school for kids with severe cognitive disabilities. After two years, he was mainstreamed into a traditional elementary school, but he was not thriving there. Behind in reading and math skills, 
Jaquan was already at risk. His mother begged the school for more help, but Jaquan was unable to get it. A should, city should have done more. As a teenager, Jaquan attended five different high schools and programs, still falling behind. He was still unable to get the specialized education he needed, and he was often absent from school. Over the course of his high school years, Jaquan missed over 250 days of school, a clear sign that he needed more help. Our city should have caught that. We should have done more. Jaquan had repeated contact with the justice system with multiple arrests, including a gun charge. At this point, we had all the signs you could ever have that a young man's life was in crisis. And with social media acting as an accelerant, that crisis was escalated. Like many young men, Jaquan was an aspiring rapper. Aspiring is a word that means hope, but his music was anything but hopeful. He was a drill rapper, part of a scene which involved using music as a challenge on social media posts, posts that bled out into violent real world confrontations. It was right there for all to see. A city should have done more. At 18 years old, Jaquan was arrested for attempted murder. He was not just a victim now, but a perpetrator. But he was young. There was still time for him to turn the path of violence and move away from that. Our system and justice system should have done more. More to help him rehabilitate him. The last school Jaquan attended was the Passages Academy on Rikers Island. And the last place he was seen alive was in his car in Brooklyn on Sunday, where he was killed with a single bullet. Rest in peace, Jaquan. We should have done more for you. And in your memory, we will do more for other children like you. We must step up and save the children who are falling through the cracks upstream. We must rescue them before they are swept away in the rivers of violence. It means changing the way we educate our children. It means building housing, creating jobs, fighting inequality, and confronting racism. It means taking a hard look at the way we do things and doing the harder work of making systemic change. It means coming together as a city and as a society to say to our children, you are not expendable. You are precious, you are valuable, you are needed. And most importantly, you are loved. It would be easy to write Jaquan's death off as another statistic, another tragic story, but I'm not going to let that happen. In order to solve problems, we must make them clear. We must make the human course known. Because there are thousands of the Jaquans in our city right now. A thousand children experiencing homelessness and poverty who need educational support, who are at high risk. If a thousand children were trapped in a burning building, we would stop at nothing to rescue them. If a thousand children were buried by an earthquake, we would dig until our hands were bloody, until every last one of them was saved. If a thousand children were drowning, we would jump into the raging waters without hesitation and bring them all to safety. Right now, we must move heaven and earth to help all the young people out there who are on the same path that Jaquan was on. We cannot let thousands of children lose their lives to violence and neglect not when we have the power to save them. We have a social, moral, human obligation to help all our children. They are our future, our collective responsibility. We must raise them up no matter where they come from, give them the skills to succeed, and allow them to take their place in our society as men and women of courage and character. Some of this work is the work of years or even generations, but we will not wait. As your mayor, I take on this responsibility. Today, 
I charge every city agency and department with finding new and better ways to help children like Jaquan. I want our housing department to find them homes. Our social services teams must help them navigate the system and give them every support they need. Our chancellor must find ways to get them in class and on track. Our police officers must find ways to keep them safe. And our justice system must work to make sure to keep them out of jail and ensure they have second chances. This is an important moment for us. Above all, our entire society must find ways to help kids and children get training, teaching, meaningful work, and measurable success. None of this is a quick fix or an easy lift, but it is urgent moral mission. Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. once said, we will not adjust to injustice. We will let these children float downstream on the river of violence. That won't happen. And that is exactly what we are doing now. Our mission is to dismantle those systems of injustice and reaffirm our commitment to our young people, young people like Jay Je Kwan. The story of Jay Kwan breaks my heart. His story tests my spirit. And we must do better for young people like him. We must shine a light on the places where we have failed and build a society that offers our children sanctuary and support. For their sake, we must do better, rise higher, be stronger. And to Jay Kwan's, Kwan's mother and father, I want to say I'm sorry. I'm sorry for our city missed so many chances to help your family. I'm sorry that your son was passed over for so long and take him from you too soon. I'm sorry we betrayed him and so many others like him, but you have my word as your mayor that I would be looking out for the thousand of other Jaquans in our city because I was once a Jaquan too. I knew what it was like to worry about losing your apartment, your stability, what it's like to live with a learning disorder and it was like what it's like to get on the wrong side of the law I've been on that path of pain, and I know there's a way out. But it's not a road we travel alone. You need help from caring adults, functioning systems, and a healthy society. J. Quan McKinley will soon be laid to rest. He'll be mourned by his family, missed by his friends. He will not be forgotten. In his name, we will work to change the story of those boys who remain here with us today. In his memory, let's rededicate ourselves to helping a new generation of young men find their way. We owe it to Jay Khan, our city. Let the work of saving thousands of boys begin. <laughs> 